Brendan! Brendan, what do you want? Why do you want me down there? Brendan! What the heck is he doing down here? Better get my flashlight. Always keep one on me. Brendan! Hello! What is he doing down here? Well, Brendan, where are you? doing down here? What's going on? Man, there's been... Uh, there's just been some strange things going on. I... I don't know, man. It's just been... I'm freaking out, dude. Tyler Cooksley. Lucas Duex. Connor Duex. It just... Go! What is this? What is this? What is, what is this place, man? It's the upside down, dude. There's a lot of stranger things that happen down here. What do you mean, stranger things? What I mean, Steve, is Hempstead is going to state. That's right, Mustang fans, the Dubuque Hempstead boys basketball team is going to state for the first time ever. That's the big news for this week's episode of Telegraph Herald, More Than the Score, presented by Dubuque Auto Plaza. I am your host, Steve Ortman. Alongside me, Brendan West, we've made it back from the upside down. Huh? Yeah, you know, it was uh, quite a journey, but, uh, you know, those egos uh, really kind of helped get me out of there, I guess. Sure, and uh, the theme for the show, obviously, is... It's a strange feeling for Hempstead High School to be going to state. Yeah, well, uh, I, I did some research before the game, and uh, Hempstead was one of only two schools in the entire uh, state of Iowa, Class 4A. The entire state? Yeah, the wow. entire state that had never been to the state tournament in basketball. The only, only other one was Ankeny Centennial. Mm -hmm. They opened in 2013. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Hempstead opening in 1970, that means it's almost been 50 years, uh, a 50-year drought for mm -hmm. them. So the fact that they were able to clinch that state tournament berth and also get some redemption over their city rival Dubuque Senior um, after losing to, to them in sub-state the year before. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's got to be a very satisfying feeling for the Mustangs and boy, uh, it, it was such a great game. I mean, they, there's, there's almost too much to talk about with that mm -hmm. game and just all, all the complexities and intricacies with that. Sure, now, you talk about a series of games. These three, te or these three games between Senior and Hempstead were some great basketball games. What stood out to you? What, what made these teams so evenly matched? Oh my gosh. Well, uh, you know, it, first of all, Senior bows out after a great season. They won the Mississippi Valley Conference outright. They're, they're led by a, a, a fantastic group of um, sophomores and juniors that, you know, really kind of carried the team. They dealt with some injuries throughout the season, but nothing really seemed to phase them. I think what ultimately came down what things ultimately came down to last night or during the substate game was um it's really hard to beat a team three times in a season you know senior had had 
defeated the Mustangs twice uh, pretty pretty handily in the regular season. But Hempstead, you know, when you when you lose those games, you, you come back, you know what you need to work on going into the next one. And uh, I got to give a lot of credit to Hempstead coach Kurt Deutsch. He switched up his starting lineup. He throws in Tyler Cooksley, who'd been mostly a bench player for them throughout the season, puts him in the starting lineup. Cooksley hits five three-pointers. All of them were either to tie the game or to put the team in the lead. And uh, in a game where there were like 14, 15 lead changes, wow. uh, you know, it, 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 talk about a clutch performance from Cooksley. Right. Now, uh, looking ahead, let's break down what thing, how things are looking for Hempstead as they approach their first ever state tournament. Who they got? Uh, they've got Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Now, uh, we talked about regular season matchups and how those aren't necessarily necessarily indicative of what happens in the postseason, but Hempstead is does at least have that trump card in that they did beat Cedar Rapids Kennedy. It was one of their signature wins this season. That was at home. This is going to be down at Wells Fargo Arena, uh, neutral territory, and we'll see if you know Hempstead can sort of get over those going to state jitters and, and, and maybe knock out Cedar Rapids Kennedy again. So either way, it's going to be a great experience for them. Uh, it's a it's a first first time this has ever happened, first time we've been able to say for the boys or the girls that they're going to the state basketball tournament. Um, but we'll, we'll see we'll see what can ultimately come of this once, once they play on Wednesday. Sure. Now tell me a little bit about... Cascade, obviously Hempstead's not the only team going on. So. Oh yeah, well C Cascade, Cascade's another uh, kind of kind of a strange team, you know. Yeah. Uh, th this is a team they have they have a brand new brand new head coach, four mm -hmm. new starters, very young, you know, very fresh look. And what do they do? They go out and they win their first 20, 18 games of the season, only lose twice all year long, and they go back to state after run after being the runner up uh, last season. So for Cascade to be down there at the 2A tournament, I also think is is pretty incredible and remarkable and once again, you got to give credit to the coach. Jacob Brindle has prepared his players very well, uh, following in the footsteps of the Iowa Hall of Famer legend Al Marshall. Al Marshall, yep. Well, uh, Boy State basketball coming up this week. We'll have all the coverage for you. That's not the only state action going on this week. Girls State basketball is taking place down at Wells Fargo Arena. I've been down in Des Moines covering that. Bellevue Marquette and Cascade, area teams that qualified for the state tournament. Bellevue Marquette in 1A. They lost their quarterfinal matchup to Kingsley Pearson. Great matchup from start to finish. These teams battle back and forth. Yeah. And Marissa Schrader, senior forward for Bellevue Marquette, had been working so hard for four years to get down to the state tournament. She finally got there, and boy, did she leave her mark. Schrader scores a Class 1A single-game tournament record, 38 points with 11 rebounds. Just an unbelievable yeah. effort. I can't imagine what it was like to see that. That's that's a legendary performance right there. Yes, I, I, I talked to Kingsley Pearson coach after the game, and uh, she said we couldn't stop her. We tried doing a couple things. We tried switching it up, but, uh, you know, they put her bigs on her. She blew by and She put guards on them. And uh, she was able to go down low and score buckets, and they couldn't really do anything. So it was a terrific performance by Schrader. I was able to catch up with her after the game to talk about her record game. Here's what she had to say. 38 points and a quarterfinal loss to Kingsley Pearson. Close game all the way. Marissa, you'd fought so hard for four years to get down to state. You're leaving with the highest scoring game in 1A history at the state tournament. What does, this, what does that mean to you? It just means it's a huge accomplishment. Like, I didn't realize it when I stepped on the court. I step on the court to do a job and to play my best and give my give 100% every time. So this is just an even more awesome way to go out. And I, it's just, I'm not upset because I could be sitting in the stands right now, but instead I got to play for the first time in my four years of high school on Wells with the best team possible. Sure. Now, Kingsley Pearson kept trying to push out their lead in the second half. Talk about the resiliency of this Mohawks team. You guys fought back every time. Huh. We just kept coming back. We knew that we weren't going to let them get the lead. Not the lead. We weren't going to let them keep pushing ahead points. They get one, we try and get more. Mm -hmm. They get another one, we try and come back with more. If we just kept digging in, getting the little points, the rebounds, the putbacks, that hopefully it would, play, it would pay out in the end. Uh, I know we're fresh off the game here. Has it really sunk in that come next year, your name's going to be in the tournament program there for a record? <laughs> It hasn't exactly sunk in yet. I'm still 
letting the law sink in a little bit, but I'm sure in a few weeks it probably will. <laughs> Talk about leaving it all on the floor. Indeed, Brendan, indeed. It was a terrific performance and a great career for Schrader. She's going to go play basketball at Loris, so a great get for the Loris Dewhawks. But uh, Marquette, not the only team down the state. Cascade in 2A, and boy, whether it's the boys' program or the girls' program, the Cougars find a way as this week in the quarterfinal matchup, Cascade upsets number three, Central Decatur, 59-56. to They'll be playing in the semifinals against Trainer here, who's number two ranked, also an unbeaten team. This team, Brendan, I tell you, they're not flashy. They don't, they're not a team that scares you from a height perspective, but that defense just, just changes the game. It's almost like there's something in the water down there. I, I, <laughs> I've been thinking about that with both these Cascade teams. and I, I mean, don't get me wrong. They both have very talented players, mm -hmm. um, but you know, they just play such great team ball, such great mm -hmm. team defense, both of them. Um, it, it, it's it's just kind of you know what what else can you say? It doesn't it, on paper it doesn't scare you. It's not it's, it doesn't yeah. give you numbers that really you know put, you know put any scare to you. But uh, you know Cascade was playing this Decatur team. This team was undefeated. They're averaging 71 points a game, best in two A. They're beating teams by an average of 40 points a game, <laughs> best in the state. But up against that Cascade defense, boy, they just didn't look the same. Yeah. I guess we've seen stranger things. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs> that's going to do it, folks, for this week's episode of Telegraph Herald, More Than the Score, presented by Dubuque Auto Plaza. I am your host, Steve Ortman. He's Brendan West. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>